I just realized I look like Miss Potato Head with this scarf on. Because it's making me look like I have no hair. Maybe I should have put it lower. I feel like an egghead. <laughs> Thumbs up for goofiness. <laughs> My name is Dion. For those of you who are visiting for the first time, welcome. And I do hope that you will come back. And for those of you who have been here before, thank you for visiting me again. And I hope that all of you enjoy the content of this video and my other videos and that you will subscribe and also click the notification bell. This video is part of the relationship series, Red Flags, as the title says, and this is part five. And I'm going to talk about two red flags. Um... They don't really roll together like the other ones did. <laughs> but they can, but they kind of really don't. So the first one is, is real short, simple, not sweet. This red flag is they want to keep your relationship a secret. And also if they tell you I need to be discreet. When someone tells me they need to be discreet, the first thing I think about is who are they trying to be sneaky from? What are they trying to hide from other people in their life? I'm 50 years old. And so the people in my circle or the people who are attempting to come in my circle or the people that I'm desiring in my circle, we're all middle age. We're not children. We're not adolescents. We're not high schoolers where we go around and tell everybody all of our business. And so it just always strikes me weird when someone says I need to be discreet. And on top of that, if I'm just meeting you, I don't know anybody in your circle. So who would I tell? Even if I did tell someone in my circle, they don't know people in your circle. So who's going to know the difference? But that's a red flag. That tells me that they're trying to hide something and they're projecting their potential guilt onto you. They're telling you, I need to be discreet, when really, it's nobody's business. You know, and if you do share things with people, it's not any deep, dark secrets that someone will be like, oh my gosh, he did this, or, you know, he did that. So it's just, being discreet, why do you even need to say that as a mature adult? They're not mature adults. They might be mature age-wise, but intellectually and emotionally, they're not. If they want to keep your relationship a secret, again, who are they trying to hide you from and why? So those are the questions. And that's why it's a red flag, because it's like, what's all the secrecy? What are you trying to hide? Why are you trying to hide it? And if you really thought that I wasn't discreet meaning if you thought I was a blabbermouth and you were concerned about me blabbing your business you wouldn't be around me in the first place and so it does not make rational sense to me it doesn't I'm sure to people who say I need to be discreet or people who say well let's just keep our relationship under wraps right now I'm sure in their mind it makes sense but for me it doesn't make sense so that one was real short and real simple <laughs> And when I receive messages saying I need to be discreet, I say, Why, what's your concern that I would tell someone about you when the people I know are not the people you know? And I usually don't get an answer. Surprisingly, right? <laughs> not surprising at all. <laughs> and so sometimes I ask those questions just for them to go away. And so they actually do me a favor when they do go away. <laughs> <laughs> when I could just ignore them all together, right? And, and a lot of times I do. I, it depends on my mood. If I'm feeling feisty, then y'all send a message like that. And if I don't feel like being bothered, then I just ignore the message all together. But that's, <laughs> that's just me. Depends on my mood. The next red flag, not related to the first one, unlike the other videos. <laughs> They're addicted to alcohol or other substances, whether legalized or not, and they seem to not realize the negative effects it has on their day-to-day -day life, or 
they are aware and don't understand the need to seek and receive help to work toward living a sober life. Yes, I wrote it down so I wouldn't stutter and wouldn't babble. So <laughs> there will be an accompanying article just like the other red flag videos and I will further break this down. Clinically, there are different criteria that a person needs to meet to be diagnosed as addicted. And a few of them have to deal with if their substance use, including alcohol, affects their personal life, their decision making, someone else's life, or their job, or just their living status in general. Um, worst case scenario is depending on where you live, you might see drug addicts in the street um, or you can just look at someone and tell that they're homeless and that they also have a drug problem. And I can pick up on behaviors like that because of my education and the past jobs that I've had and also I grew up in, grew up in the inner city and so I just have an eye for those things. And so sometimes you can just tell. So those are the worst case scenarios. However, there is a such thing as a functional alcoholic. If you know someone who drinks alcohol or uses drugs and they only binge on the weekend, like Friday after work until Sunday night, they're just binging, they're drinking, they're doing drugs, they're partying, and that's just what they do every Friday night, all day and all night, Saturday, all day, and into the evening on Sunday. That's a functional alcoholic. So just because someone, or a functional addict, so just because someone doesn't use substances every day does not mean that they're not addicted. Um, the same as um, if a person, if they do drink every day, but they're functional, they still go to work, they pay their bills, but they need to have th this drink every time they get home from work. Sort of like, <laughs> I'm an ex-smoker. When I smoked, there were three times I needed to smoke. After I ate, when I first woke up, after sex, well, four times, and after I had, you know, some time in the bathroom. So, <laughs> and those of you who smoke know what I'm talking about. So those were the four times when I felt like I had to smoke a cigarette. So that's the same for um, when someone uses substances. If there are certain situations or certain times of day when they just feel like they have to use this product, they're addicted. As I said, they go to work, they pay bills, you know, they dress nice, you know, you see them come and go, and you wouldn't even know that this person has this problem, but they do. And so they're, they would not necessarily be diagnosed as a functional, I mean, I'm sorry, they would not necessarily be diagnosed as an alcoholic or a drug addict but they would be considered a functional addict. And so that's the difference. If you meet someone and they tell you, yeah, everybody in my family tells me I need to quit drinking. They seem to think I have a problem with alcohol and I don't. If they tell you that, they have a problem. If one person tells you something, that's just one person. Two people, it's like, oh, okay, maybe. You have three or more people telling you the same thing. You need to pay attention to that. So if you have a handful of people that are close to you and that really know you telling you that you have this problem or you should stop engaging in such and such behavior, you're addicted. And there's more addictions than alcohol. There's more addictions than, than drugs. There's porn addictions. There's shopping addictions. <laughs> there's all sorts of things that people do to fill their time and to make themselves feel better in that moment. The thing with using substances or using something as a filler for something you're lacking or missing inside yourself is that it's a temporary fix. When you're high, all of your problems go away, but then when you're sober, all of those problems are still there. So it's not really fixing anything. And so there are some people who say, oh, I just need this drink because, you know, it was a hard day and I'm just having trouble coping when I come home. If you need that substance or that drink or that shopping trip or to watch porn or whatever else, if you really feel like you need it to function effectively, that's addictive behavior. And so if you notice these things in a person, that's a red flag to you. And there are some people who do realize that it's a problem, but they refuse to seek help for it. And I get it, it's hard to make a change. It's hard to say, I really need help with this and I'm going to seek help for it. 
and I'm going to work along with this person to help me get on the sober track. That's hard to do cause, because when you've done something for so long, that's what you know. And sometimes there's a fear of the unknown. Who am I going to be if I don't do this drug anymore? Who am I going to be if I don't hang out with this group of friends on the weekend? And so it's, it's, <sighs> there's a lot of psychological <laughs> thought as well as emotional thought that goes into the process of addiction. It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to drink because, you know, I just like how this wine tastes. Because there's people who drink and it's not an issue. They have a glass of wine every other day after dinner. It's not an issue. They just like to have the glass of wine. It tastes good. The difference is they don't feel like they need it. So that's the difference. I'm going to tell you a story really quick. I know I'm good for stories and I'm going to try not to make this too long. I was chatting with the guy. This was probably three years ago, maybe four. I was going to say maybe four, about three years ago. And we were chatting back and forth and he was saying, you know, he wanted us to meet. And I said, okay, sure, because I do prefer to meet sooner rather than later to determine if I even enjoy being around a person. Because if I don't enjoy being around you, what's the point in just emailing or texting or messaging or talking on the phone? Why? So anyway, <laughs> So he told me Thursdays, Fridays, and on weekends, he hangs out and he drinks. Thursdays and Fridays are usually business meetings or meetings with, um, excuse me, colleagues, and they go out for drinks. And then on the weekends, you know, he has drinks at night and he thinks it's only reasonable if he's with someone for them to share a cocktail at the end of the evening, whatever evening it is, and after dinner every night. And so I had said to him, I said, I no longer drink alcohol. And so he got kind of pissy. He was like, I don't see anything wrong with, you know, having a drink in the evening or sharing a cocktail or, and I said, I'm not saying it's unreasonable. I'm just saying I don't drink alcohol. And he said, well, I don't think this is going to work. And I don't even think that, you know, we should meet. And I thought it was funny, but in a sad way, I don't drink alcohol. I do not have a problem being around people who drink. But for him, it was a problem to be around me and I didn't drink. And that's when I thought, he must be a functional alcoholic. And so to be around someone who doesn't drink would make him think or realize, maybe I really do drink a lot. And so maybe he was projecting that he was going to feel guilty or feel like he was being judged. And to avoid any of that, he decided he didn't want to meet me because I didn't drink alcohol. And so that was a first for me. It really was. So you didn't want to meet me because I don't drink alcohol. I don't have a problem being around people who drink alcohol. And so that was the end of that, but it was just really strange. And when I had mentioned it to a friend of mine, she said, he sounds like an alcoholic. I said, yeah, he does. He sounds like a functional alcoholic. If you do not want to be around people who do not drink, that's also a red flag. <laughs> it should not be an issue. And yes, it is reasonable. If you drink and this other person drinks, then yes, it's reasonable to have a cocktail at the end of the night. But if you drink and I don't, then it's not reasonable for me because I don't drink and I'm not going to start drinking just because you drink or to make you feel better. Do you, boo? I don't care. <laughs> as long as you're not a sloppy drunk or you get angry or whatever. I don't care. So it was just really strange to me. And it was eye-opening to me, too. Like, wow. He probably is a functional alcoholic. Like, if, if it is that big of a deal <laughs> for him to not be around somebody who doesn't drink... That's a red flag too. So I'm going to add that to the article. So hopefully I'll remember by the time the video is over to write it down in my notes. <laughs> so just as a recap, the two red flags in this video and in the article will be if they want to keep your relationship a secret and also if they tell you they need to be discreet. The second red flag we talked about was if someone is addicted to substances or to other things. And addicted meaning it disrupts their life their well-being, their ability to care for others, or their job, or their social standing in society. And so let me know what your thoughts are below, and the link to the article will be below, and you will see me in the next video. Thanks. Bye.